Even though I like to dunk on Prague, like in my last video about cycling, not everything is bad here. The public transportation system is great, so much so that around 49% of all trips are made by transit. Trams, trains, metros, buses, boats and a funicular crisscross the city, transporting millions of people every single day. In this video, we'll explore the reason why Prague public transport is so great. Before the video starts, please consider subscribing to this channel, it's free and it helps out a lot. Thanks and on to the video. The system is absolutely massive. It features 730 metro cars, 802 trams, 1216 motor buses, one trolley bus, one funicular line in conjunction with a lot of regional rail. The city has also partnered up with bike sharing companies Recola and Nextbike, allowing you to take up to two 15 minute trips per day if you own a public transit pass. The public transit network looks like this. The bus lines mostly serve the suburbs, while the trams mostly run around the inner city. The free metro lines serve as the main transit arteries, collectively transporting roughly 1.4 million people per day. The system is also complemented by regional rail lines, known as S-Lines. These trains aren't operated by the Prague Public Transit Company, but rather by the national train operator České Dráhy. These lines mostly run from the outer areas of the city into one of two centrally located train stations, either Prague Main Train Station or Prague Masaryk Train Station. There is a term in the Czech language for places far away from everything else, Prdel Sveta, or literally ass of the world. Prague has a few of these places, mostly around the fringes. Even in these asses of the world, there is still some transit service, usually buses, sometimes small diesel trains. All in all, if you live in Prague, you probably have access to at least some transit service. This is the cost structure of tickets for Prague Public Transport. A ticket for 30 minutes costs 30 Czech crowns, 90 minutes will run you 42 Czech crowns, a day ticket costs 120 Czech crowns and a 3 day ticket costs 330 Czech crowns. There are also transferable and non-transferable passes. The cheapest is the monthly non-transferable pass which costs 550 Czech crowns and the most expensive is the yearly transferable pass which costs 7800 crowns. Most locals get a yearly non-transferable pass which costs 3650 crowns. That is very affordable considering that the median yearly wage in Prague is 379,236 crowns. That means that the median worker in Prague only has to spend less than 1% of their yearly wage to get unlimited public transport travel around the city. Nice. Compared to other cities around the world, this is really good. For example, the median worker in London, England has to spend between 3.66 and 6.71% of their yearly income in public transport, depending on which type of pass they buy. As another example, a median worker in Berlin, Germany has to spend between 1.64 and 2.21% of their yearly salary on public transit. The reason why the system is so cheap is because it receives big subsidies from the city government. Tickets only cover about 20% of the operating expenses. The subsidies are pretty uncontroversial because people see them as a benefit to everyone, so they don't mind subsidizing the system with their tax money. I believe that the low cost is one of the reasons why transit here is so popular. This is the schedule of the C metro line. As you can see, the trains run extremely frequently, with frequencies as short as 2 minutes in the morning and evening rush hours. The minimum frequency is one train every 10 minutes and that's in the very early morning or from 9pm to midnight. The great frequency doesn't just apply to the metro, regional trains run as frequently as every 10 to 15 minutes during the rush hours and at minimum every 30 minutes during the early morning and late night. On weekends the trains usually run every 30 minutes, buses also run very frequently every 5 to 8 minutes during rush hours and once per hour during early mornings and late nights. Unfortunately, none of these run from midnight to 4 to 5 am. This is the network of night buses and trams. These provide service and they're very dead of night. The frequency is okay with most lines running once every 30 minutes to 1 hour. This makes sure that if you want to go somewhere at any time of the day, you can get there. 
Prague's public transit system is extremely reliable. Nice. If the timetable says that the tram is coming at 8.50, it's coming at 8.50. Delays are very rare, even in heavy traffic, because a lot of vehicles have dedicated right-of-ways. The metro is fully separated, the trams have a lot of separated tracks, and buses have a lot of dedicated lanes on the road. The trains are a bit worse, with delays being relatively common. 89.1% of trains arrive within 5 minutes of the scheduled arrival time. Note that only 15% of delays are caused by the train company themselves, the rest are due to failing infrastructure, repairs or factors beyond their control, like extreme weather. Overall, the system is very reliable, so making plans around it is a breeze. In 1993, the Prague Integrated Transit System was created. This started the integration of Prague's transit system with the regions around it. This is the map of lines going from Prague's outer regions into the city. As you can see, the network is very dense. This means that even if you don't live in Prague itself, you can get there by transit relatively efficiently. Unfortunately, the frequency in some smaller towns can be pretty bad, with buses running every 1-2 to two hours. On weekends, the buses run super infrequently, with a lot of buses running only once or twice per day. There are four travel zones within the city limits of Prague, but the regular tickets are valid across all of them, so you don't have to worry about your ticket not working for all of the zones. Suburban travel is more complex, with a total of 12 travel zones, and not all of the tickets work for all of the zones, so you have to be careful with selecting your ticket. If you buy a public transport ticket in Prague, you can rest assured that as long as you stay within the city limits, your ticket is valid for every mode of transit, except for the Petrine funicular. In summary, I believe Prague has a really good transit system, one that could be the envy of a lot of cities around the world. I hope future governments will build upon it further to make it even better. This has been Tramly, thanks for watching and I'll see you next Tuesday. Bye.